Well, hello and welcome to Understand Men Now. I'm your host, Jonathan Asley of jonathanasley.com, and I'm so excited to be shooting this short video for you today. Our topic, 50, wait, wait, 50% of men, 50% of men are seeking this type of relationship. Should we do it this way? 50% of men are seeking this type of woman, I should say. So um, really quickly, before we get started, if you have questions based on this video, please post a comment below. I do my best to read all of them. I try to respond to some of them. So definitely, if you have some questions, write them down. Okay, let's talk about the 50% of men who are seeking this type of woman. And the reality is, is well, most of my channel is, or most of my audience is those in midlife, which is after baby making years and before retirement. So if you're 42 to 69, you're kind of in the right place. Although I got to tell you, a lot of 30 year olds are watching my content because I'm coming out. I'm here as your big brother. So I'm the heart protector for women single looking in love and those in relationships. So, um, but what's unique about midlife is that as we get older, our childhood wounds and traumas begin to surface. Our childhood wounds and traumas begin to surface. And certainly we have adult traumas. People are going through divorce. They're going, some of them are going through contentious divorces. Sometimes they're going through uh, issues at work. Maybe there's uh, volatility at their work. Maybe there's a lot job loss. Maybe someone's starting over in their life. Maybe they have elderly parents that are going through some stuff. Maybe they have their children that are going through some real serious kind of tough stuff. And all of this emotional chaos is weighing on them. Emotional chaos is weighing on them. And it's weighing heavy, heavy, heavy in their life. And they're literally, their life is like, like on quicksand. Like, in other words, the life below them, just the foundation below them seems so weak. And many of these men are either avoidant or... Um, anxious love attachment styles or either avoidant or anxious love attachment styles. And if you're not familiar with the book Attached, the book Attached, you definitely want to check this out because it talks more about how we attach to other people based on our um, childhood patterning, our childhood wounds. Okay, so I want to go deeper into this guy that his life is in chaos. His life is literally struggling. And what's so fascinating that there are so many women out there that are highly attracted to this kind of guy. He's the kind of guy that has no problem being vulnerable. He has no problem expressing what dysfunction is going on in his life. And what's sad in this particular case is many women hear this as if it's music to their ears. Ah, oh, he's being vulnerable with me. That means he's emotionally mature and he's able to ride that, you know, that white horse into the sunset with me because he's vulnerable. He's emotionally available. Bum, bum, bum. He's emotionally available because he's vulnerable. And yet that's the furthest thing from the truth because what these men are genuinely seeking or what they're most attracted to is that beautiful quality in almost all women, that beautiful nurturing mother quality, that nurturing mother quality, that quality that says you're going to take care of me. And men whose life is on weak foundation want to be taken care of because their life is such in chaos. So they gravitate to that beautiful woman who's sadly an enabler, not an enabler per se, but a nurturer. On some level, there is enabling going on. So what happens with these men, they choose these type of women, and what happens is they begin the relationship and all of a sudden, you know what, you're too good for me. I'm not ready for a relationship. You, are, you deserve someone better. I'm going to repeat that. You deserve someone better. I'm not ready for a relationship. And it's because these men, their lives are on weak foundation. And you, ladies, you know this. You've dated these guys. Listen, I was there. I was there in my life. I was a train wreck after my divorce. I lost my quarter million dollar a year job, okay, which was my identity. I was going through a divorce. And then the market crash of 2008, I got a seven figure wipeout. And I used to go to bed wishing I didn't wake up. I was pretty sad because I have two children. I mean, sadly, I've now lost a child. So, but that's enough for another conversation. But those who follow my work know that that's my son, Connor. 
I always change the pictures up, but I sadly lost him in 2018. But, um, but, and, I don't like saying but, I always want to change it to and. But when I look back to right after my divorce, I was a train wreck and women used to eat me up. I mean, in the dating process, I was so open and vulnerable. I was able to lean in and share all my dysfunction. And there were so many beautiful nurturing women that would just say, I'm gonna covet you, I'm gonna take care of you. And then sure enough, as soon as I hit my threshold of how much I could emotionally invest in the relationship, I was gone because the foundation underneath me wasn't solid. And there is probably 50% of men out there, and that I know that's a high percentage, but and now that 50%, that it varies. There's the extreme men that their life is absolute quicksand and they're like, they're like drowning in it. They're drowning in it. And then there's some, I was like up to here, but some that's a little bit lower, they're able to move through it and they, because they have a plan. They have a plan of moving through their dysfunction. But be very careful because you might be thinking about the guy who's got a plan that's moving through his chaos. That's one thing. He's still on a weak foundation, but at least it's a lot better who's the guy who's just falling in and he's going to take you in for a ride. And believe me, I've witnessed this so many times, so many times in relationship. That's why I want to encourage you to invest in your own personal development, your own emotional sovereignty. And if you follow my work, I talk about my book frequently, What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway? What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway? As a way to basically prepare yourself for those men who are in emotional chaos. Because when you're in a solid foundation of who you are, your own sovereignty, you won't be attracted to those guys. You will actually repel those guys because they're going to be afraid of you right from the get-go. But if you haven't done the inner work, which I'm a huge proponent, watch all my videos. I bring up book after book after book because when you're solid in your own sovereignty, you're going to repel those guys. Those guys, you're going to lose interest in them right away. Now, I know some of you will run for the hills from those guys. I get it. You'll run from those guys right away. Great. Because that high quality guy you're looking for, hey, his life may not be perfect, but the ground beneath him feels very fairly solid. And when it's solid, they can actually build a house together with you. That house of commitment, that house of partnership, that house of a co-created relationship. And that's the kind of guy you're seeking. Don't seek those 50% of men. Seek those guys that are in the other 50% whose ground underneath them is solid. All right, as I said before, I wanna hear your questions on this. Please post it below. I wanna hear your thoughts. If this resonated with you, if you've got more to say, if you got a question, post it. And if you like my content, you go, God, I wanna work with this guy. I wanna to talk to this coach, okay? I'm a coach, that's what I do. Check out the link below to schedule a free discovery call to see if coaching is right for you. Okay, I'm gonna wrap up this video as I always do, giving you a big, gigantic Jonathan Bear hug if I have your consent. Oh, thank you. Mm. Wishing you a wonderful day. Thanks so much. Bye-bye now.